What's up everybody, it's time to go through some more workouts. So last week I got on the Exergenie and did some heavy resisted pulls. So since I haven't been sprinting, this is like a good way to get back into sprinting where you're really focusing on pushing through the ankle, staying strong and stable in the ankle. I speeded up a little bit with a little less load. Um, when I got to here, I felt a little uncomfortable, so I shut it down after that and did some drills. Started with the wall drill, uh, partly just because I wanted to make a video on Instagram about it, but I like doing this variation of the wall drill where you strike in front of the back foot and then you push through. I think it's just better. Here we got some A runs, really focusing on bouncing up and down, keeping good upright posture. Then some ankle dribbles. Really like ankle dribbles. You can work on cycling, uh, work on foot control, posture, rhythm changes, things like that. So I did a few sets of these back and forth. And I would, I've been sick, so, you know, <laughs> that kind of tired me out. Next day I went to the gym and got on the curved treadmill and I just went and did a few sets of this where I kind of jog into it. Then I try to hit a high stride frequency, really focusing on front side mechanics because on the curved treadmill I can't really extend back without pain. I can do it on the ground, but on the curve I can't. So just did a few sets of those. Then I went into a few starts, just really working on the push, not really anything after that. And it felt okay, you know, did a couple. Then I went into some mini bounds, just hopping from left leg to right leg, really feeling that vertical force application uh, striking straight down under me. I think these types of exercises are really good for learning how to apply force vertically and then managing your posture accordingly. Followed that up, I went and did some uh, reactive drop squats. I think I went to about a quarter or half depth, something in there, maybe a, a third squat, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. But started out here, this is... Uh, 260 pounds I believe with air and mass then I went up another uh, I don't know probably 100 pounds just really trying to drop fast stay on the balls of my feet and then bounce out as quick as I can uh, moved up weighted once again I'm doing them hand supported because then I can stay on the balls of my feet and I just find that it I just have a better workout when I do it this way and I like the Hatfield squat which is when you have your hands supported so if you have a safety squat bar doing Hatfield squats are great uh, threw in some pogo hops in between some of the heavier sets just so that I'm bringing in something that's a little more reactive in between those more grueling, slower kind of exercises like these squats. Here I went up to, I think, mm, probably 400 pounds because I topped out at 450, which I think is the next set. Uh, so once again, not dropping super low, but just trying to reverse it quickly. Once again, going to pogos, really trying to get off the ground quickly balanced with jumping high on these uh, not really focusing on one or the other so I guess that last squat set actually was 450 with mass and air so then I went into uh, hamstring tantrums where you loop your legs through bands and then you basically try to go up and down as fast as you can since I haven't been sprinting uh, I figured this is probably a good way to get some hamstring activation I saw Ben Simmons post it so uh, I thought I'd try it Let's see, a few days later I went out to the track and I did some more of the heavy pulls. This time I did it in spikes and wore a 10 pound weight vest so that way I have a little bit of vertical loading as well as horizontal. And then, what do you know, I was able to do some 10 meter sprints. So that felt really good even though they were super slow. It just felt great to get out and sprint. It felt really freeing to do that and really gave me a lot of motivation. So after that I went to the gym I think the following day or maybe two days later. Started with some single leg bounds or single leg hops, whatever you want to call them. Once again, working on that vertical force application, managing your posture in the air, and having a good ground contact. Here we got Apple Zoom uh, freaking out on us. Notice how I'm striking with the whole foot, not trying to smash my toes into the ground. You want to use your whole foot when you're doing bounds like that, especially at a low speed. Then I threw in some lateral hops because I think I'm, I just lack some you know, lateral strength and lateral abilities and I want to work on that more. So I threw in some lateral hops and those actually felt really good. Then I broke out the uh, ballistic ball, which has a velocity sensor in it. Did some throws, tested some measurements there. Then I went into these reactive drop squats again, going a little lower this time. Um, I'm really trying to pick my feet up on these, as you can see, and drop into the hole as quickly as I can. So I pick my feet up, I drop, and then right when I hit the ground, I'm trying to reverse it. So here we have some eccentric overload going on using a, a mix of velocity and you know, weight. Um, you could overload eccentrically with just weight, but those are really slow. I'd rather do a faster eccentric overload by dropping as fast as I can and then trying to overcome that. Then I went into some low box step ups. These I really like. Uh, these are one of my favorite exercises. 
I was able to see peak force outputs of over 4,200 newtons, which is over five times my body weight. And then at 100 milliseconds, I think I was getting over 3,000 newtons or somewhere around there. So that's pretty good, you know, to be able to, to put out, you know, four or five times your body weight within 100 to 200 milliseconds into the lift. Um, so this felt really good. Then I decided to do something a little dumb, uh, <laughs> which was uh, depth jumps. So I think depth jumps are fine if you do them on low boxes, but once you go up above like 12 inches, 18 inches, the ground contact times just get so slow that you have to question how relevant is it going to be to to your event and sprinting. You know, on this jump right here, I was on the ground for 266 milliseconds or something like that. There's a 42 inch drop jump or depth jump. So if we're on the ground for 80 milliseconds at a time in sprinting, how is this going to help us? You know, whereas if you go to a low box like this and I can get off the ground at 150, okay, that's a little bit better. If I could get it to 120 or 100 milliseconds, now we're talking something that's relevant for sprinting. And I think you have to consider, you know, what are the neurological demands you're giving to the body when you do lifts? And if it's a lift that you're trying to have be relevant to speed, then you have to consider those ground contact times and how that relates to, you know, the time to peak velocity or ground contact times and jumps, things like that. Then I went into doing good mornings, which are obviously more of a general exercise. I need to work on my hamstrings since I haven't been sprinting. And these made me super sore. So I did those. I mixed in some isometric uh, knee lift holds from a hanging position. Uh, this hits exactly where I got hurt, right at the rectus abdominis insertion point. And so those have been kind of a, a key exercise for me for getting better from this injury I've been dealing with. Then I went into the split leg good morning, which I like better. I guess you could call it a staggered stance. You know, it is what it is. But these will definitely make you sore in the hamstrings, the glutes, and the back. Um, so if you're looking to develop your hamstrings, glutes, and back, and you're in a period where you're not competing, these are a great exercise to do. You just got to understand when you first do them, you're probably going to be sore for like three days. You know, you don't have to use a heavy load and you will get sore. But if you want a good development exercise for those muscles, then this is a good way to go. Really like the staggered stance because you get a little bit more gluteus medius. Um, you can kind of, I don't know, it just feels more relevant to sprinting. Then I went to the uh, hanging knee raise, but with a pull-up. So here I'm holding that isometric position and then doing a pull-up. This got me really sore in the back of my shoulders, I think just because I'm, it's almost like a behind the neck type of movement. And I think this is probably good for me to do just because my shoulder mobility is, is kind of lacking. And, uh, you know, I can mix in some ab work with some upper body work in the same, same movement. Now, just to wrap things up, uh, finished up with another set of these staggered stance good mornings. And, you know, I like them. I think I'm going to keep doing them at least until I'm back sprinting full speed and you know then sprinting will be the bulk of my hamstring development but until that happens i'm going to keep doing these so i hope you guys enjoyed this video make sure to check out sprintingworkouts.com i got a bunch of articles on there i'm posting new articles every day if you want to help me out help the channel help my website please repost any articles or videos that you find interesting repost them on facebook on instagram or if you have a website where you write blog articles maybe you can find something that you like on my website incorporate it in an article and link back to me um, you know, I don't ask for you guys to give me any money, but sharing the content, doing that sort of thing can be really helpful. But that's all I got for you guys today. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll talk to you guys next time. This is Cody Bidlow with SprintingWorkouts.com and AthleteX signing off.